I'm Mark Ingram with Garage Gurus. Today's tech tip is going to cover hybrid safety equipment. Hybrid vehicles and electric vehicles are showing up in our garages much more often than in the past, and sooner or later, you're going to have to disable the high voltage system as part of a service procedure. In order to do that, you have to have a little knowledge and the correct equipment. The main thing you need to be aware of is that the voltages you're dealing with are lethal. Most systems have a battery pack that holds at least 300 volts DC, and when the engine's running, voltages can run as high as 500 volts. So this obviously is a hazard. By following service information procedures, you can keep yourself safe and service the customer's car effectively. Things you need to know, number one, following service information. Whenever it tells you to disable the high voltage system, you gotta do it. Hot, both hybrid vehicles and full electric vehicles have very similar properties as far as the battery pack is concerned. And the instructions will tell you when you need to disable and how to do it. The equipment needed to disable and work around high voltage is pretty simple, but you need to be aware of what's required. First of all, the digital meter required has to have a category three voltage rating. The meter on the right has 1000 volts indicated between the ground and voltage terminal. And then in between, it has just a little lightning bolt. The meter on the left, again, says 1000 volts between the volt and ground outlets, but it says category three or cat three. That means this meter has insulation inside that can endure an extended connection to a high voltage system. And this is what you have to use. The other main piece of equipment is the high voltage gloves. The gloves are in two sets. First, you have a rubber glove that at first glance looks like a dishwashing glove, but this is what gives you your primary protection from the high voltage. The test to make sure these gloves are good, number one, there is a date code stamped on the wrist of the glove. In order to interpret the date code, refer to OSHA requirements on their website, and they'll explain the details on when the glove is safe and when the glove needs replacement or testing. In order to check the glove before each use, it's very simple. Just shake a little air into the glove, roll up the wrist tightly, and make sure that the glove holds air. As long as the glove continues to hold air, you know there are no holes in it, and it would be safe to use. The hole in the glove would be equivalent to a hole in a spark plug boot. You've all seen a spark jump out of the side of a boot while the engine's running and go to ground. Well, a hole in these protective gloves would do the same thing. The high voltage could actually get through into your skin. So once we've tested the glove, we can put it on, and then you put on a leather glove afterwards. The leather gloves come matched to the rubber gloves. And with this, the rubber gloves pur purpose is to keep you from poking a hole in the rubber glove while you're working on the car. It makes it a little awkward to use both of them, but this is what's required to keep you safe. The other required equipment consists of safety glasses, of course, and rubber-soled boots. But with this equipment and following the service information, you can do the disable and enable procedures safely. I'm Mark Ingram with Garage Gurus. Thanks for watching. And for more tech tips like these, be sure to subscribe to our channel.